Hello. I've done some videos before about strain gauges and how to use them. What I'd like to talk about now is what to do with strain gauges when you've got a temperature uh, change. Temperature change between when you apply the strain gauge and when you're measuring data from the strain gauge. Now the reason this is important is because strain is strain. The strain gauge does not know the difference between strain coming from a load and strain coming from a temperature change. And there are many times in which we want to make sure that the strain gauge measures only the strain due to a load and does not respond to a temperature change, or vice versa. We can do either one. So that's what I want to talk about here. Now, we're going to need a sample case here. So let's imagine a, uh, a simple beam. We'll get cantilevered on the right side, and there's a force here, and I think it made that 500 newtons. And we've got two strain gauges on here, and the distance from the force to the end of the gauge is one meter. All right, so far so good. We'll assume this, this uh, beam here is made out of aluminum. So E is 70 gigapascals, and I'm going to need to know a cross-sectional shape, because we're trying to keep this simple. The cross-sectional shape is going to be 50 millimeters square. And we're going to assume it's solid aluminum, okay? So there's no center hole or anything like that to worry about. So we're going to need a couple of things here. In a second, we're going to need to know the area moment of inertia of the beam. And we're also going to need to know the coefficient of thermal expansion. Well, the area moment of inertia is 112 bh cubed. Well, b and h are both 50 millimeters. So if you work that out, you get, let me make sure I got this right, 5.208 times 10 to the minus 7 meters to the fourth. Okay. Now I'm going to do everything in base units here, so I'm going to do everything in meters and uh, degrees uh, centigrade. Um, I found if I do it that way, I make fewer mistakes than if I'm constantly trying to uh, uh, convert units. So there's that. What's the other thing? We need? Oh yeah, arrows or the alpha coefficient of thermal expansion. Now this is something we probably already know about, but every material has a coefficient of thermal expansion. When uh, materials get warm, they tend to expand. I don't know of any that don't. And when they get cold, they contract. If you look at a bridge, notice that the bridge, at the very end of the bridge, there's a pretty good chance there's a big metal plate that's got teeth that overlap. The reason it does that is so that as the bridge expands and contracts, with changes in temperature, it can actually, there, there's no force at the end. It can, it's actually free to move on one end. Okay, that's for thermal expansion. And the coefficients of thermal expansion are pretty small. The coefficient for thermal expansion for aluminum is 23.6 times 10 to the minus 6 per degree C. Now, per degree C, that's actually in strain per degree C. It's actually, you could call this millimeters per millimeter per degree C if you wanted. So basically, you get 23.6 micro strain for every degree C, if you want to look at it that way. Okay, and we're going to need to know a temperature change between when the, the gauges were put on and when they're being read. So let's say that delta T equals 50 degrees C. All right, so we got all that's all the, the initial stuff already taken care of. What we're interested in now is number one, let's figure out the strains this gauge and that gauge due to the temperature change and then due to the load. So let's do this one. Okay, well, let's see. We know that the expression for uh, uh, change in length for a beam equals alpha L delta T. That's probably in your book somewhere, whichever book it is you're looking at. Well, if I divide through by L, I get this. Well, change in length over length, that's strain, I think. The way I learned it, that's what it was. Okay, so if I put 23.6 times 10 to the minus 6, 1 over degree C, and multiply that by, oops, by 50 degrees C, okay, the units cancel out. And I'm going to get this little tiny number. Let me make sure I get this uh, 
right there. 1.18 times 10 to the minus third. So that's really not very much. Okay, Fairly low strain. But it's not zero. Your strain gauges are going to know that's there. These two gauges will see that. All right. And let's say we wanted to look at the change in resistance on your gauge as a result of that. Well, let's see. Got that. Let's, let's find change in resistance due to temperature. That's a terrible P there. Let's see if we can do this better job. There. That's better. So let's look at the strain, uh, the, the change in resistance due to temperature change. Well, let's see. We know that delta R over R times delta L over L equals K, where K is the gauge factor. We're going to assume a gauge factor of 2 here. If you don't know where this came from, go back to one of the previous video clips, because I've got that in there. Right, what That delta L over L, by the way, is strain. Okay, So delta R looks like it's going to be epsilon R K, which looks kind of like ERK. So that's, let's see, 1.18 times 10 to the minus 3. So we make that a little neater. 1.18 times 10 to the minus 3 times 120 ohms. I guess I didn't say that, but we're going to assume those are all 120 ohm gauges. Okay, times K, which I'm going to assume is 2. Okay, so your change in resistance, again, isn't very much. It's 0 0.2. 83 ohms. Okay? Not a lot, but enough that your, your Wheatstone bridge will see that. Okay? So now, what do you do? Well, if you wire that gauge in and not that gauge, you're going to see a strain. Okay? Let me draw your Wheatstone bridge here. I've got to erase some of this stuff. And I guess we, well, we don't need that anymore either. If you need some of that, just back the video up a little bit. So here's a Wheatstone bridge. R1, R2, R3, R4. Three there. Okay, there's voltage in. And there's voltage out. Okay? Now, what I'm going to suggest here is that we make this one R1 and that one R2. Okay? We'll wire those in in that way. So this is gauge 1 and that's gauge 2. Right? The reason I want to do this is because here's the expression for a bridge circuit. Now let's see where I'm going to do this. R1 R3 minus R2 R4 R1 plus R2 R3 plus R4 Okay. We're going to assume the input voltage is 12 volts here as well. Okay. Well, if this gauge here goes up by the same amount this gauge goes up, that number up there is unchanged. Right? If, the, if R1 and R2 go up by the same amount, and let's also say one other thing here. To keep the subscripts uh, from getting out of hand, let's say that R1, R2, R3, and R4 are all the same. They're all 120 ohm gauges. Okay, So I'd, I can get rid of the subscripts because they're all the same. In this general expression, they don't all have to be the same, but it's a lot handier if they are. So, R1 equals R2 equals R3 equals R4, and we'll just call that R, and that's 120 ohms, okay? So that's mathematically how I'm going to say that all the gauges are the same. When I do that, I'm going to get R plus delta R times R minus R plus delta R times R over, it's actually going to be 4R squared, I think, when I work out the denominator. Well, that and that are exactly the same. That's, that's times V in. That's V out. That equals zero. 
it doesn't matter what r is, and it doesn't matter what delta r is. It's going to be zero. Okay. So if you wire your gauges in that way, this this uh, beam is not sensitive to strain. What it's really not sensitive to is it's not sensitive to uh, elongation. Now the problem is, is if you put a load along the axis, it's not sensitive to that either. So you're not in this specific case, you won't be able to see temperature changes. That won't affect your answer because you're not trying to uh, apply a load along the axis of the beam. Let's make one more change. I'm almost out of uh, time here, so I'm not going to actually go calculate the strains due to the bending loads. But let's say that due to bending, let's see, I'm going to change, I'm going to leave, take that out. We don't need that anymore. Okay. Due to bending, in bending, okay, sigma equals my over i. So epsilon, the strain due to bending, equals my over ei. We know all those numbers. Y is 25 millimeters. Oh, heck, I'll write this down here. We, we know this. Um, let's see. Strain due to bending, that's going to be 6.857 times 10 to the minus 4. Okay? And the, the change in resistance because of that I'll let you guys work this out. Okay, it's 0.165 ohms. Now, the nice part about this is that's going to be positive and that's going to be negative. Increase in resistance, decrease in resistance. So when I do that, that changes signs. That's no longer zero. When you work this out, and let's see, you're going to get a voltage, you're going to get 8.229 times 10 to the minus 3 volts. A small number, but not zero, okay? So, work with this gauge uh, setup is sensitive to bending. It's not sensitive to elongations, which means it's not sensitive to temperature changes either. And there are other uh, geometries you can use, other uh, ways of wiring this uh, Wheatstone bridge. If you guys want, be more than happy to talk about those too.